Good morning, school, and welcome to this week's reflection section. Now, during the Easter holidays, I managed to sit down and watch the film Belfast, which is based on a semi-biographical account of Kenneth Branagh's life growing up in North Belfast. I have to admit, I was deeply touched by the film and found it quite an emotional experience, given that I knew a lot of the places where the film was set. Uh, so I thought, actually, it might be an interesting reflection section to give you my version of growing up in Northern Ireland, as there were many similarities uh, with the film Belfast. Now, it actually happens that this year is the 101st anniversary of the formation of Northern Ireland, uh, which is where I was born and brought up. However, there have been centuries of battles going back through the years between English settlers and the Irish. In more recent times, it came to a head in 1920 during the Irish War of Independence, when the British Parliament divided the island into two self-governing areas with devolved home rule-like powers. Thus, in 1922, Northern Ireland became functioning as a self-governing region of the United Kingdom. Now, the following assumptions on this particular slide are very much based on my experience growing up in Northern Ireland in the 1980s. And I know a lot has changed since then. But to keep it very simple, on one side of the divide were the Unionists who wanted to stay as part of the United Kingdom, and on the other side were Republicans who wanted a united Ireland and the British to leave. Now, I realise that this is a fairly general and sweeping statement, uh, but I needed just to make that point before I go into any more detail on any of the other slides. Now, the divide between Catholics and Protestants in Northern Ireland really was grounded in history, culture and politics. This then came to a head in an era known as the Troubles, which lasted from 1968 through to 1998, with more than 3,500 people losing their lives on all sides. Civilians, police, British Army and terrorists. In fact, the film itself, Belfast, is set in 1967, just at the very start of the Troubles. And we start to see some of the beginning of the, the divisions in the communities. Now, I grew up in the 1980s, uh, which was actually a very turbulent time in the Troubles history. And there are a couple of moments that will stay with me forever. Now, in 1987, I was 12 years old and uh, I was getting ready to go to uh, a year seven disco. And I was in Belfast with my mother and I was trying on these brown suede shoes and they fitted perfectly. And just as I was walking up and down the shop, uh, the shop assistant ran to the back of the shop where we were and said we had to evacuate the shop as soon as possible as there was a suspected bomb in the street. Now my mother being as she was, made me take the shoes off and we had to run out of the shop in my socks. Now this reminded me greatly of the clip in the film Belfast when Buddy's mum uh, makes him take back the washing powder. For those who've seen the film, you'll understand that clip. Now at the time uh, we were stood in the street and we waited in the street whilst a controlled explosion took place in the main shopping area of Belfast. The bomb went off uh, and it blew windows and so on and caused quite a bit of damage down the street. A few hours later, we went back to the shop and I got the shoes, but I'll never forget those shoes or that experience. One other memory that will stick with me uh, forever uh, was from 1987 and it was the Enniskillen bombing and it happened on Remembrance Sunday um, 12 people died, 63 were injured, uh, and it was when an IRA bomb went off, which was really intended to kill British Army. But of the 12 who died, 11 were civilians, including children. Something that, as I say, I'll never forget. Now, I went to school uh, in an old fashioned grammar school, which was non-denominational, which means it was open to all religions, Catholic, Protestants, Muslims, Jews. And actually, this was not the case in a lot of the schooling 
uh, in Northern Ireland. The school had been there for over 200 years, but the area around the school had changed considerably. And in fact, the school was very close to where the film Belfast took place. Now, at the school itself, there was an area called the Dunkern Gardens, uh, and it was notorious because on one side of Dunkern Gardens, you had a very loyalist area, and on the other side of Dunkern Gardens, you had a very Republican area. Now at school, you were told never, never walk down Dunkern Gardens. It was too dangerous. However, if on the very rare occasion that you got kept behind after school and you missed the school bus and you needed to get to the train station, the shortest route uh, was down the Dunkern Gardens. And stone fire was indeed quite common. It was an interface between both the Loyalist and Republican sides, and it was not a safe place to be for us because we were seen as easy pickings to both sides. In fact, statistically speaking, the map on the screen was probably the most dangerous square mile during the Troubles, based on the number of killings, punishment shootings, and general rioting, with various army bases, courthouse, and jails nearby. It was not unusual for us at school for the army to arrive fully armed and set up checkpoints outside the school, and Chinook helicopters would be arriving back at the army base daily. In fact, during my GCSE chemistry exam, uh, we had to be evacuated halfway through into the playground due to a bomb scare nearby. Again, something I'll never forget. Now, sport in Northern Ireland is highly contentious, and you get to play particular sports based on where you live, uh, I guess what religion you were, um, and again, what school you went to. But it was also, and had the capability to break down barriers. And I remember on one occasion, I missed the bus uh, to get to the train station. I was in year 11 at the time, uh, and I was with one friend, and we knew we had to go down to Dunkern Gardens. And as we made our way down there, we could see a group on one side of the street, about our age, and thought the worst. Now, it just so happens at the time, uh, I was playing football in an integrated league. Now, where they had Catholic teams, Protestant teams, and again, I played for a mixed team. Now, I ended up on the league team, so I was playing alongside some of these interesting characters. Anyway, as we made our way down the Dunkern Gardens, the stones started flying, and we started running. Then all of a sudden, I recognised one of the group because I'd played football with him on the previous week. Anyway, it just so happened that he called the rest of them off and we got away safely. So in that case, sport really did help break down barriers, no doubt about it. Now, back in the 1980s uh, and even into the early 90s, in Northern Ireland, there was a concept known as the brain drain. And this really uh, so, sort of showed itself in, in the number of students uh, that went to university in England and Scotland, most never to return. Now, I was one of these people and I went to university in Scotland and never returned to live or work in Northern Ireland. So again, just like in the film Belfast, where the family moved to England for better work prospects, uh, this was the equivalent sort of 20 years on. Now, Belfast and Northern Ireland will always be home to me. And I try to go back every year if possible because all my family are still there. But the final few lines from the film Belfast summed up my time growing there. So no matter how far you go, you never forget where you came from. So thank you for listening today. It's uh, been very actually cathartic and therapeutic for me uh, to relive some of my childhood, just as it was to watch the film Belfast. Tell me, Ma, when I go home, the boys won't leave the girls alone. They pull my hair and stole my gun. Well, that's all right tonight, Ma. She is handsome, she is pretty. She is a man of Belfast City. She is a comforting one to face. Christmas, Christmas, Christmas.